What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new video. Now when last we met, I had been abducted by aliens and they were conducting experiments on my rectum. But now I'm in El Paso. <laughs> Just kidding. When last we met, I was in Kansas, but now I'm in El Paso, Texas. But speaking of my rectum, while in Kansas, I got to try something new that I never tried before. I used a bidet. Now I had heard about them and I was intrigued by the idea because everybody likes to be clean. And uh, I was at a truck stop that had bidets. So I said, let me try it out. My grade on it was, I don't know, maybe a B. They allowed you to control the pressure of the water and the temperature of the water. And there was a fan that blew warm air on you behind to dry it. But the problem is, remember the old style hand dryers in public restrooms where you hit the thing and you gotta rub your hands vigorously. It takes forever. Well, the same thing. You're just kind of sitting there waiting for your butt to dry. I think they can improve upon that. And also I need more water pressure. I wanna know that the inside is clean as well. <laughs> Am I talking about this on my channel? All right, let's move on. I'm in El Paso at the Flying J, and guess what? I have a friend next to me. Check this out. I was just taking a nap, and I woke up. I heard this reefer going, brr. JCT, John Christner, my old friends. By comparison to some of the other reefers that JCT has that I've been next to, this one's really night and day better. But it was enough that I noticed it. Even with my truck idling, normally if my truck's idling, I don't really hear reefers. It just blends in. Good old JCT. I love you guys. And just for comparison, this is what a normal reefer sounds like. What I do to, it serves two purposes. Number one, it kind of helps block out heat. But number two, it also insulates for sound. Is I buy these cheap $3 pillows at Walmart with a little pillowcase. I jam the pillow in the window sill and we have these blackout curtains. So I put that and use the curtain to hold the pillow in. And what it does is kind of help again with the heat or uh, the sound as well. It really makes a difference. So I have four windows, this side, that side, and then upstairs where I sleep is two more windows and two more pillows. That might be trouble for later on because once the temperature starts to cool down, I'm probably gonna turn the truck off, open the windows. It's gonna be a somewhat cool night and that's how I normally do it. I don't like to idle the truck all night. And so I'm gonna get the full volume of JCT's reefer. I don't know, we'll see. It might be a long night for me. But we're gonna start this video with where I spent the night last night in Santa Fe, New Mexico at the Black Mesa truck stop. And um, we'll take it from there. So all we can do now is, you know what, let's get started. Okay, here we go, y'all. This is a brand new truck stop for me. It's actually an Indian casino called Black Mesa. And this was recommended to me by BFB, so I'm gonna try it out. Now, I mentioned BFB a few times before. I don't know if y'all caught that on my channel. So if you were wondering what is BFB or who is BFB, that's uh, my friend Brian. And he knows every truck stop, every restaurant with truck parking, anything you need to know bars, um, what exit to take, I, call him, he knows. So, and I came up with BFB. You know when you meet somebody and um, you get their number and you put, you'll put like their name and maybe a one or two word description of how you know them or who they are. So for example, Eddie, electrician, uh, Mike, mechanic, Molly, the dancer, or whatever. And so, um, his name is Brian, <laughs> and so if I ever need to know where to get food or a bar room, he knows every bar room, you know, in the Western United States, 
So, F, so it's Brian Food and Bars, BFB. I remember I had one funny one um, in my phone. It was Jamie One Date. <laughs> I went out on one date, and this girl was like, I remember I was busy doing, I was making spaghetti. I was cooking spaghetti for a church function, West Side Christian Church. And uh, they had this big, they call it a mission center where these missions would come in from out of town and do charity work or whatever. But it was a full kitchen in there and I was cooking two big pots and blah, blah, blah. And so she's like, hey, you know, what are you doing? I'm cooking. Well, uh, want some company? I was like, well, the thing is, uh, how am I gonna park? Is it pull through? It's gotta be. I said, that it's, bo it's just an empty room with a bunch of bunk beds and a kitchen. You know, I just, there's nothing to do. You're just gonna be bored and wasting your time. Well, I can come keep you company. I was like, uh, I don't know. I was cooking and she'd have to drive way from across town to go in a, an empty room, you know? I said, I don't know, maybe some other time. Well, I see how this is. You don't wanna talk to me, that's fine. I knew, you know, you know I'm, you think you're too good for me or whatever her deal was. And I was like, no, it's just, I'm trying to save you the trouble of coming here I guess I'll park right here. She flipped out, went ballistic, you know, and I'm like, uh, I, well, uh. so, um, <laughs> so I was like, well, if she ever calls again, I need to know. <laughs> so I've changed her name to Jamie One Date. So I'll know that was the girl after one date, you know. <laughs> Okay, it's 6.30 in the morning, and this convenience store still isn't open yet. I can't understand how they do business like that. Last night when I got here, I went to go eat at the restaurant at 5.30 p.m., closed. These are the laziest <laughs> people, whatever. So whenever that happens, I can't go in. Always have a big jug of water, and you just brush your teeth from inside the truck. There was this guy before I brushed my teeth and everything. He was walking towards my truck. And I was like, is this guy homeless? Turns out he was a truck driver. And um, I got out to go throw away some trash. And when I'm coming back to my truck, he's standing in the parking lot next to his truck urinating. I was like, God, ah, you see, it's guys like him that give truck drivers a bad name. He's So then I get my bag to go in the store and brush my teeth and realize the door was locked. I was like, oh, that's why he was peeing in the parking lot because he couldn't get in, but still. So I'm gonna let y'all in. If you're not a truck driver, you wouldn't know this, but if you are a truck driver, you know. We have a pee bottle, usually like a 32 ounce Gatorade bottle. Some truck drivers use this as a pee bottle and they'll, it's so disgusting, they'll fill the whole thing up before they empty it which I don't, I mean, look. Why not just go pour it out in that dirt over there? Right? Just go pour it out over there. But they'll fill a whole gallon bottle up before they pour it out. But I'm kind of a clean freak, so I use my pee bottle, pour it out, then I use this water to pour in it with some Dawn dishwashing liquid, shake it up, and then go pour that out because I can't have the idea that I'm driving around with urine vapors in a bottle and urine residue, I can't have it. I can't have that in my truck. So I clean that thing out so spick and span and put, you know, so every time I use it, when you open it, it smells like Dawn instead of smelling like stale piss. So, but some guys are just disgusting, man. Okay, I'm on a 34 hour reset here in El Paso, Texas, and I had to get out of the truck. So I took a lift and I went to mass this morning and then I went to a Mexican steakhouse that I'll do a little review on. But I got this thing on my window, soothing and relaxing massage, Swedish massage, massage therapist, outgoing calls. 
outgoing calls so they'll come to my truck and give me a massage and <laughs> in the truck maybe they have a van or something with a massage table set up I don't know it says 25 bucks for a half hour or after 8 p.m. 50 to after 8 p.m. I'd be like don't call me after 8 p.m. I'm watching reruns of America's Test Kitchen at that time. Leave me alone. Anyway, I'm not calling him. So the place I went to eat was called Coralito Steakhouse, and it was excellent, so check this out. Okay, like any Mexican restaurant, they'll bring you chips and salsa. See the stuff on the right? I thought it was salsa verde, but it was actually some kind of creamy avocado dip almost. And uh, I wasn't sure about it, but I gave it a try. And let me tell you, it was so good. It's almost worth going there just to get that. Um, it was excellent. And then came the hot stuff. I should have known by the color of it that it was hot. Of course, I'd take a big bite. And it was one of those delayed heats where you eat it and all of a sudden it just hits you out the blue. Whoa, whoa, where did that come from? So I ended up just eating another bite of the green stuff and then taking a sip of margarita to try to wash it down. And by the way, y'all, how sad and lonely is this? <laughs> Just an empty seat, some dude sitting by himself with nobody across from him. Oh, well. And then came the entree. They call it arancheta steak or I don't know. It's their house specialty. But boy, let me tell you, it was absolutely excellent for a fairly cheap cut of meat. I ordered it medium rare. It came out medium rare and it was just full of flavor. It was absolutely perfect i'd definitely go back and get that same thing you know i'm more of a ribeye guy i don't normally do those thin steaks but i have to tell you it was absolutely excellent and then for dessert i ordered the brownie a la mode they decided that i wanted flan more so they brought me flan i can't complain that was excellent too so this restaurant was an a plus sometimes as a truck driver you don't have the choice of a great place to spend the night Case in point, last night, I delivered at, I think, 8.30, I dropped the trailer, and uh, I had to find some place around here, plus I was out of time, so I couldn't go searching. I had to just take what was available, and in this case, it was Quick Trip. So, you see where I'm parked, they're doing some, they're gonna build something in an empty lot, but they built the driveway. See how they built the driveway? So I just backed in right there spent the night next to this busy road that was really noisy so it wasn't exactly a good night of sleep um, but you know what they got the job done you see this bag of ice well it was a bag of ice this guy comes down the sidewalk right here turns in drops this bag of ice on the ground then right here he parks his buggy or some people would call it a shopping cart I guess I call it a buggy Inside of his buggy is all of his belongings, or some of his belongings, and one of them was a woman with no legs and no teeth. And she's sitting, if you don't have any legs, are you sitting? I guess she's sitting in the buggy. <laughs> sitting in a buggy with all of his guy's belongings. He leaves her right here, and then proceeds to walk around into this. Now, why didn't he just wheel her towards the store to where he can keep an eye on her <laughs> not like somebody's gonna kidnap a woman with no legs and no teeth but she's just sitting in the buggy right there resting in the buggy I should say I don't know what you call it and uh, I thought this is just the stuff you see out here sometimes it's so crazy and uh, then he came and got her and wheeled her away Okay, y'all remember my last video with the cactus? Well, I saw some on the side of the road on Highway 93 in Arizona, and there was a nice wide shoulder, so I was able to pull off and walk up to them and see them in person. And uh, these things are really amazing in person. You see those needles. They're kind of brittle, but uh, you wouldn't want to get stuck with one, trust me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, these things are just unbelievable. I mean... I'm about six foot tall, and look, those things, that one's at least 20 feet tall. This one might have been 25 feet tall. 
Um, I can't believe they grow so tall. They don't get blown over or anything like that. Uh, but you see, compared to me, <laughs> how tall that thing is. So it was cool to see it up close and in person. And after that, it was jam out to Britney Spears and just look at him from the side of the road. Here we go. The world famous Zizix Road or Zizix. Look at it, it's spelled Z-Z-Y-Z-X. Zizix or Zizix Road. Apparently the history with that is some snake oil salesman claiming to be a doctor got a little he got a lot of money this was back in the early 1900s got a lot of money selling snake oil and opened up some it was supposed to almost be like a spa back there and look I mean if you look out there is nothing around here anyway if you take that road it's abandoned now but you see his house he built some sort of big old house with bathtubs built in to the floor multiple ones where people could bathe you know and I guess they put a snake oil in there I'd like to go visit that one day uh, but it won't be today I passed up the exit anyway okay so here we go on highway 395 north of Bishop, California. I've never been on this section of this highway, but I see mountains directly in front of me, which is telling me, get ready. <laughs> it means we have to cross a mountain, which means really steep grades, uh, windy mountain passes. Here's our first steep grade. Didn't take long. All right, well, if I see anything interesting, I'll show y'all. But let's see what this road brings us. Yeah, ice cold. It's beautiful though. Look at all those birds under there. Check out this abandoned, it's like a trailer that they built a house around. Or maybe the house was here and then they built the trailer. It's abandoned. I wonder if the door's open. It's open, you think I should go in there? Then there's an abandoned service station. Uh, some guy's got a pickup truck in there. It's not abandoned. Well, needless to say, I enjoyed my trip up Highway 395. I have this thing for abandoned stuff. I just, anytime I see, I just wanna go and explore it. Maybe we'll do some more of that in future videos. But right now, I'm in Reno, Nevada at the Petro Truck Stop. I'm gonna go in to the Iron Skillet restaurant and get a steak. It won't be as good as Cerrito Mexican Steakhouse. No use in doing a restaurant <laughs> review on this one. But I think that's about it. I do have a little lanyard for y'all. If you stick around after my sign off, you will see some footage. It's just driving footage from my trip up Highway 395. It was really beautiful, but a lot of people kind of get bored just seeing driving footage. So I'm gonna put that at the end as the lanyard for y'all. And so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here and go get my steak. So I wanna thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you watch the next one. And until then, this is Jason signing up. Thank you.